this really is a magnificent world that we live in, isn't it? You don't have to travel far or wide to have at least some sense of that. Whether it's the vast expanse of the oceans and the deserts, or the terrible power of the wind and the waves, the beautiful tranquility of the mountains and the lakes, it really is a beautiful world that we get to be part of. And the fundamental Christian conviction about the world is simply this. The starting point for understanding the Christian faith is that this world, in all its complexity and diversity, this world is God's world. That He made it, that He sustains it, that it derives its origin from Him, that it derives its destiny for Him. This world is God's world. Actually, it makes sense when you think about it. There are only two alternatives available to you. One is that the world is eternal, that it's no one's world, it's just kind of existed as one of those things from all eternity. Uh, actually, our best scientific knowledge is that that's not the case, that the universe, the space and time of this universe came into existence at a certain point in time. The only other option is that the world kind of spontaneously brought itself into its own existence. But a scientific axiom is that from nothing, nothing comes. Interestingly, it was atheist scholars who initially opposed the emerging evidence for the emergence of the universe, what was called the Big Bang, they realised that if the world was not eternal and the world didn't bring itself into its own existence, then that was good evidence for the existence of a creator. And that creator we Christians call God. This world is God's world. It belongs to Him by creation. And that involves three fundamental implications. The first implication is this. It means that if everything is created by God, if there are only two sorts of things, God and everything else, and God created everything else, then everything, you and me included, everything has a relationship with that God. It's the relationship of being a creature to a creator, of being a creature loved by God, created by a loving God. That's the case whether you know it or not. That's the case whether you like it or not. It's just reality that you are created by God and therefore loved by God and therefore have a relationship with God. It means that the only right object of your worship, the only thing which you can properly give your heart and life and soul to, is this God who created you. That's the first implication, that you have a relationship with God as his creature. The second implication is this. God is good. And that means everything that God has made is also good. It shares in his goodness. The Christian faith is unambiguously positive about this world and life in this world. All that we have in this world to enjoy is from God's good hand. He made it to be a place of life and peace for us to enjoy under him and in relationship to him. The purpose of God is for that enjoyment, originally and ultimately. He gives us the gift of life. He gives it to us to enjoy. So we Christians have no problem uh, ascribing value and dignity to this creation and especially ascribing value and dignity to other human beings. They exist from the hand of God. And so who are we to ascribe them any less dignity than that? The third implication that follows from the fact that this world is God's world is that he created it in freedom and with purpose. He created personally. It's not the kind of automatic work of a robot. No, God made it not out of need, not out of necessity, not because he somehow lacked or was lonely, but because he loves to give. He loves to share. He's a personal God. And what that means is that the only adequate response to this personal God is equally a personal response. I was talking to a friend a while ago who said he believed some stuff about God, but that he really didn't practice anything to do with God. And as we explored what it meant to believe something without practicing it, it became clear that he didn't really believe it at all. No, the only adequate response to a personal God who is your Creator is a personal response of love and trust and commitment. This world is God's world. He made it to be a place of life and peace. He made it to be a place of joy and thanksgiving. Uh, there's no danger in being a Christian, you see. Only fulfilment. Fulfilment of the relation of a creature rightly ordered to her or his creator. Of course, that's not the way we see things in the world now. There's been a terrible interruption to this plan and purpose of God. But the starting point is important. This is God's world. He made it. And everyone and everything in it has a relationship to him. That's where our fulfillment is found.